I built a theme park out of candy. What if you could enter a world full of delicious candy and thrilling attractions? Welcome to Candyland, the sweetest place on earth. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Behind this sweet facade sits a park struggling to survive and bring new visitors in. Guests pay a fee to enter the park, but the rides and food are free. As an architect, I have been challenged not only to make this park super profitable, but also mega immersive. Our goals are not easy, have at least 600 guests in our park. The question is, will we still have the money to do that? Thankfully, the park already has a huge roller coaster, a hyper coaster that is. We also have this immersive inverted coaster. In order to bring in more profits, we first need to spend money. The park has a lot of free real estate, so why not add a flat ride to attract visitors and hopefully sell more tickets? Okay, but how are we going to make this park immersive? By that I mean how can we truly turn this valley into the ultimate candy world? Well, why not let the architecture of the overhaul park reflect that theme? I decided to have a very diverse park, so each section is going to have a different style. Let's focus on this coaster station, which has an eclectic neo-colonial style, inspired by Buenos Aires. I felt this mix as well, so the building itself is not very kittish, but it fits the theme of the overhaul park with oval shapes like a chocolate egg. The color scheme also helps with that aesthetic. However, we are facing some issues. The park is not bringing in money. Managing this park was not easy. I spent too much money on decorations and flat rides and then ended up bankrupt. Thankfully, I have a time machine. Welcome back, let's pretend nothing happened. As you probably figure out, architects are not the best businessmen. We just spend money, you know, and sometimes in very poor taste. But I figured out a strategy. I ended up building as much as possible at the start of the game, leaving enough money to build two more coasters after I have reached 300 guests. I also did a little cheeky thing of lowering the maintenance budget and adding on-ride photos so guests can spend an exorbitant $6 to take home their memories. At least it's better than SeaWorld though. The cost of these photos helps offset the supply cost for food and drinks. Now that we're bringing money and guests, I was able to build a Mac Extreme Spinning Coaster and achieve the necessary goals. And now I can spend all of this money on decoration. Let's build an Alpine village with a sweet twist. Notice the train station, it has a tower with a cherry on top. Our small Swiss village has some interesting elements like a clock tower that is actually a cake. Delicious, right? But what makes a park special is the landscaping, so trees and greenery are very much important. Next up we need to improve the entrance, as it's not that welcoming. With the new colonial candy building as a focal point I was able to build a main street. And here is where we dive into the incredible world of Art Nouveau. Art Nouveau as the name implies, came in a time where architects were figuring out what was going to be the next big thing. Some looked into the past, building beautiful neo-gothic structures. However, Art Nouveau tried to be its own thing, a new style. Inspired by organic elements, Art Nouveau spread throughout Europe and to the new world. However, what if instead of organic nature-inspired motifs, we had candy-inspired motifs? Now that's a sugary spectacle. The terrain doesn't allow for many buildings, but it's enough to make a welcoming visitor center. It's sure to be a sweet treat for all who visit. Then we have the flagship land of our park, the chocolate factory. Here guests not only have fun, they also learn. With a water coaster based on the production and distribution of the world's most delicious treat. So not only do you learn, you also get wet. The overall architecture here is more industrial and reflects that kind of aesthetic. We also have a wooden coaster themed around a gingerbread palace. However, I needed cash to finish the details, and with two loans already taken, I decided to do something controversial, an IMF loan, aka I was going to cheat. 
You see, Parkitect has mods, which are free and available via this Team Workshop. One of these is called the Cheat Mod, that I don't understand. But it also allows you to give yourself more money. I gave myself enough cash to finish the details and pay off the loans. However, since we are in sandbox mode now, I don't consider this as a hard offense. And I did uninstall the mod after finishing this. And you can see the park is still losing quite a lot of money. And this is Candyland, with sweet rides and thrilling roller coasters we have finished this breathtaking park. Now, as an architect, I'm going to leave before the park declares bankruptcy. What an adventure! From delicious treats to thrilling coasters, we have built a park that's a candy-coated dream. But the fun doesn't stop here! If you enjoyed Candyland, wait until you see our next challenge. Click on one of these videos on the screen right now to find out more about Parkitect.